So since the last time we spoke, I've been on a few sessions. Uh, not a great deal has happened. It's been pretty quiet time for me. Been away a little bit. My dad came down to visit, and I took my dad bass fishing um, from the shore. It wasn't really the right time of tide. I wanted to go at night, but um, my dad's sort of not really uh, an experienced fisherman. Didn't have spare waders either, so took him down for a few casts on the beach. Um, had a good laugh and a nice to actually get my dad out fishing for a while. Next time I went down, I had a couple of schoolies. I can't remember much about the session. Fished the low tide again. I uh, couldn't find anything big. Uh, lots of action. I saw a couple of nice trout jumping again as well. And um, I'll stick the pictures up of the schoolies and maybe even a couple of little video clips if I can find them. So I just go down to the mark, a couple of casts, a little schoolie on the Savage Gear Seeker. Not the size you want, obviously, but I'll get them back straight away. And there's the second one, even smaller than the last. Once again on the Savage Gear. And then this happened. So the last couple of sessions I've been poor at best. I've had one small bass. Um, the last time I went down, I actually blanked with a couple of hours down there and had some technical issues with my braid. I've now changed the braid on my reel back to Barkley Whiplash. So back to Barkley Whiplash. I put Barkley Whiplash on it. It's what I had on my old reel. I'm now going to head down, see if I can get a bass. Um, heading down, probably last lights in about an hour from now. Um, low tide is two or three hours away, so I am going to be fishing the outgoing tide for a couple of hours. I'm not going to have time to fish um, the incoming tide afterwards. So get a few hours in, hopefully get a fish or two. So I'll give you a bit of a fill in at the end. So I wasn't actually planning to go fishing last night. I sat down to watch the new series of Stranger Things. Mine is one episode and then just before I sort of went to put episode two on, the sun came through the window and I thought, let's get outdoors. So I headed down to the beach. Surprisingly, not a single person there, not a single car anywhere. So I had the whole place to myself, which was absolutely lovely. I was on the estuary mark that I've been talking about a few times. Um, I was there a little bit earlier than I normally would be. I wasn't planning on really good fishing, so I didn't really think about it much. But I went down, um, probably still quite a high tide at the time, um, on its way out. So I got down there last night, probably around half seven, eight o'clock. And it was still pretty light, still some nice sunshine around. And the sunset was around half past nine last night. I fished right through into sunset. Um, I had a couple of um, small um, bass uh, on this, um, well, it's black and orange sort of colour, 16 gram, 16 gram Savage Gear Seeker. Um, so we had a couple of bass on that first, um, small, very small fish, obviously still a little bit of fun, quite nice, so I was enjoying myself. And then just as the sun started to set, I thought I'd try a few different lures, so I tried a few different things, including the um, needle fish I'd had the bigger fish on before. Um, I was getting knocks when nothing was hooking up. Um, I sort of persevered a bit for a little while, but didn't get any luck. So I switched back to this lure just before, probably just before about half past nine, because it got really sort of dark, or maybe a little bit slightly afterwards. But yeah, just as it got sort of really dark, I switched back to it. And then first cast with it, um, yeah, I, I caught a much bigger fish. So um, the rod bent over pretty quickly, started taking a bit of line. Um, I got quite excited, uh, stood my head torch on um, so I could sort of see what I was doing because it was dark enough to the point where I couldn't actually see. Um, reeled in, I was quite excited once I saw the fish, so I um, was worried about losing it, so I got my hand in its gob pretty much straight away. I was worried about it bouncing off and then walked my way over to some weed, um, laid the bass down on the weed and then I thought I'd better measure this one because it might actually um, be like there or thereabouts what my target was so if you remember from my earlier episodes or episode one my target for this season was to get a 60 centimeter bass on a lure at night all right ladies and gents that's the one i have stretched it out when it's properly stretched out it's 60 centimeters which makes it my biggest bass so far unguided and it's from my uh, new mark i've been fishing loads and loads i'm gonna uh, get her back in the water quickly so i won't take too long i don't know um keep her out too long all right here she is 60 centimeter bass beauty she's going back oh she's kicked already is she gonna go come on good girl
Gonna beat yourself. Not good. Oh, come on, girl. Come on. Come on. That's it. Good girl. Good girl. Beat yourself again. Oh, she did. That's good. That's good. That's it. And on the UK Facebook group, I got a message the other day sort of saying about how I feel about these metals. I do kind of feel like I'm cheating when I fish with them. Um, especially because the schoolies seem to hit them so much and the schoolies are also quite greedy. But the fact that the bigger fish took it too, um, yeah, I don't feel so much like I'm cheating, but um, obviously a lure is a lure. Um, I love the way that lure moves and lets me uh, fish the shallow water. Um, it doesn't sink very fast, even though it's a metal. Um, it, can go over really really shallow sort of two feet quite comfortably and it sort of swims just below the surface and gives sort of spinning flashing action and um, which obviously the fish are liking so I've been catching a lot of bass on it. Last night I had 10 bass in total and um, one the 60 centimeter bass I'll put it up now with the, on the measure. Uh, I had a 42 centimeter a little while afterwards um, which I was really really happy with because I wanted to get one for my friend who's a chef and um, I don't normally keep bass and um, but I don't eat any fish that I don't catch myself as a rule, so I don't buy fish from the supermarket, I don't eat fish in restaurants, um, but if I do catch a bass or a fish that I think is suitable size to keep, I will keep the occasional one. So that's the first bass I've kept since around 2008. Um, I can normally just keep a few mackerels to forget, but yeah, we're going to have that hopefully tonight. That would be quite nice to have the bass. I released obviously the big fish, the 60 centimeter bass, so you see the release footage now. So yeah, so lessons learned last night I suppose is that it's worth sometimes getting to the mark a little bit earlier than you think about and um, so this the uh, area that I've been fishing I'll describe it a little bit so it's an estuary mark probably around sort of two to three feet deep at high tide and um, where I join the estuary it's sort of like a river and then as the tide goes out the water dip disappears and there's a almost like an S bend and you can follow the S bend around and normally catch um, a few schoolies around there sort of sunset time if it coincides with the low tides um, and then there's a deeper gully and an island and then the deeper gully I've seen a few bigger fish on and um, which is round to the right side of the estuary the side that I don't join on so I have to wade across to it um, and then in the actual um, channel between the island and the main beach um, I've seen loads and loads of action there loads of bait fish loads of small bass loads of sea trout jumping I've seen mullet playing around there so it's obviously a really high um, high spot for activity so I fished that quite a few times as well at night and had um, had a few um, schoolies and then further around from there there's almost like another beach um, which is out of the flow when the tide's going out or when the, obviously the river's flowing so um, it's not as bad for weeds so it's a nice sort of um, underwater desert I say where there's not as much weed there and um, I've been targeting that area mainly just because I can actually fish lures and not get too much weed because the mark I'm fishing is unbelievably weedy at the moment and I, I believe it's going to get worse and worse and worse from what I've been told until about October when the weed starts to die back and um, so yeah that's sheltered sort of mark a sheltered part away from the main flow and um, that's where I've been fishing the last few sessions and it's where I had the 42 centimeter bass a couple of weeks ago and um, and tonight I fished further out than I had normally um, and I was quite a bit deeper so I had sort of the water right up to the top of my just about as high on my waders as I could possibly go and um, because there was no sort of waves last night no um, real movement in the water and yeah that was where I managed to start catching lots of schoolies and I think at one point I had three in consecutive casts and um, obviously I had eight schoolies in total a 42 and a 60 so yeah really good nice fishing so yeah I'll go back to the lesson learned so the lesson learned was to yeah fish the mark and um, and stay in one spot I suppose that, that for that piece there so I, rather than fishing all the little bits of the estuary I had been fishing before and catching on I targeted the one specific area and I didn't fish it right through until I'd like to if I wanted to get home last night and I was bloody tired and um, so I fished it through probably till about half past 10 so I was home by 11 
Um, so yeah, so I fished. What time was low tide last night? So I didn't even fish it to to peak low tide. So it's was, it was probably three, three or four hours. What time did I get down there? Seven. Yeah, so probably three hours in total of the tide going out, and I still haven't fished the last hour of the tide going out, or any of the tide coming in, which can also be quite productive on that spot. So yeah, really, really happy to get my 60 centimetres, and obviously that was my target, so I'm going to keep this going, because I've decided that was a little bit too easy. Um, obviously I've put a lot of effort into learning the mark, really, really put a lot of hours into learning the underground topography or the underwater topography of the area so I do know the shape of the river I know where the bends are I know where the weedy patches are and um, I've got that sort of mark sauce shall I say obviously I'm not no expert but I'm doing quite well down on that mark and um, ignore the dog barking <laughs> um, so yeah so my, my, my next target really obviously first of all is a 70 centimeter bass on a lure I have had one before with mark as a lot of you will know if you've seen my earlier videos um, but I don't count that one, so I do want a 70 centimetre now, and um, I believe I'll probably get one this season. I'm this probably might not be the right word, but I've got faith in myself. If I keep putting the time in and the effort in to learn the marks so as I have been, the fish will get bigger. So I, I'm determined now to get a 70 centimetre bass on a lure at night. Um, and I'm also going to fish a few more marks, so I'll put a lot of effort into this one estuary mark. I've got another beach mark not far from me where I've been fishing, and I've had one bass of around 40 centimetres. Um, I'd like to get back down that mark a bit more now, um, especially now that there's fishing numbers, to see if I can find the sort of size of fish down on that mark. There's a real load of sort of reefy, rocky bits um, as the tide comes in, and you can fish over, which is really good down there. So I'd like to fish that from the top of the tide down, and fish over the reef and find out what's coming in to feed on that reef at night. Uh, another target of mine is to switch over to wrasse. Um, so I'll do another, maybe another series or maybe just another episode if I start doing a bit of wrasse fishing. So especially on the sunnier days, um, I want to get along the southwest coast path, get down to some of these big gullies and um, hopefully meet up with a few people as well. I know a few of the guys that are also on YouTube like to do a bit of wrasse fishing. Um, yeah, so June is a very busy month for me. I've got a couple of festivals and a holiday, so I'm not going to get a huge amount of time to fish. So I'm going to have to pick my windows very carefully um, and probably just set some alarm clocks and get up for two or three hours during the night to get down to where the low, well, to when the low tides are if I'm going to carry on fishing the estuary mark. So yeah, thanks very much. I'll put some pictures up of the fish from last night so you guys can have a look. Um, I'd really, really like some feedback on this series. Um, I want to know what you guys want to see, what you want to see me talk about. Do you need more fish footage or more actual fishing footage? Obviously, fishing at night is bloody hard to get good footage. Um, I'm having to use the torch. Um, uh, the GoPro switches off pretty much as soon as um, as soon as it starts to get dark because it's just really, really crap and low, um, low light levels. I use um, my Samsung S20 mobile phone mainly at night with the head torch. It's not too bad. Feel free to um, drop me some notes in the comments, anything you want to see, anything... I should do less of. Am I boring the hell out of you? Wanted to give a quick shout out actually to um, Simon Osborne and Craig who um, helped me put together my outfit because I got um, obviously my bass rod is the Nebula um, 7 to 35, which is a very, very popular rod. I've got the new um, Pen Slammer 4 2500 size reel, um, which I got there from there also. Um, the lure that I've been doing most success on is the Savage Gear Seekers. This isn't the colour I mainly use, but the one that was seemed to do the trick last night because I had tried the other colour before that and I didn't have a touch on it. And as soon as I switched over to this, it started catching. So it could be timing or it could be the lure, but obviously when I switched back to this lure towards the end of the night, I started to catch the bigger fish as well. So um, it just shows that some days um, the colour does seem to matter a little bit. Obviously it's not hugely coloured, it's just a little bit of um, black and pinky orange, or I don't know, you might call that peach I suppose. I'm actually colour blind so I really really struggle with the colours. You can probably tell I'm really tired so I'm going to log off and go for a nap. Thanks very much for watching, uh, hopefully see you again soon and um, let's get that 70.